I'm Zhu, I'm Zhi Yuan Zhang from Institute of Automation, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, I'm delighted to present our research on user response modeling in reinforcement learning for agile auction. Now is part one, introduction. Currently, one of our primary revenue research for internet platforms is displaying it in the feed stream. Figure one shows an example of a auction of an edge alongside organic items. Our main objective is to balance user experience with platform revenue, as it ex excessive advertising can detract from user experience. Currently, the task of ads auction faces two major challenges. First, user response is influenced not only by their long-term interests, but also by short-term random factors. Fig2 illustrates a user who likes junk food. When in a good mood, they might to choose buy pizza, but if you suddenly catch a cold, they are more likely to choose healthier foods, such like a vegetable salad. Furthermore, users are active agents with dynamic interests, whose actions affect rewards and state transitions. It is often unrealistic to assume that the user response policy are static. Figure three demonstrates the impact of different user responses on system state transitions when using an online shopping app. Holding down causes the system to display new products while leaving the app returns the user to the phone's home screen. We initially modeled the edge auction as a markup decision process, which primarily consists of five elements, state actions, rewards, state transitions, and a discount factor. The state mainly includes the ads and organic items to be displayed, user information, user historical response sequence, and the context. The action is whether or not to insert an ad within the feed stream. The reward primarily consists of advertising fees, platform commissions, and user experience. It is important to note that both the agent's action and the user's responses influences systems data transitions. Here, the state transitions is divided into two steps. First, the agent takes an action, and the system displays the recommended products, removing the displayed items in the next state. The second step involves the user's response, such as pulling down or leaving. A discount factor is used to balance short-term and long-term rewards, with a value ranging from 0 to 1. Now it's part 2, methodology. Fig 5 illustrates two traditional reinforcement learning as a auction methods. A. Architecture of IO agent with user representation modeling. B. IO agent with auxiliary user response prediction task. Both of them assume that the user policy is static, and then it, its impact does not need to be directly considered in the state transitions, just like the Q-value function. Here, we don't need to consider but the user response B. Our approach is based on opponent, opponent modeling perspective where a user's policy is considered dynamic. Therefore, it is necessary to consider user response B in, this, in both state transitions and rewards, resulting in a change in the formulation. Different user responses will have different corresponding Q-values, and the final Q-value is the weighted sum of the Q-values on the four types of user responses. The four types of user responses are pulling down, order, click, or leave. The following is a section using ISM to model the impact of short-term random factors. Fig 7 shows the basic ISM, which divides the state into a deterministic, uh, <coughs> divides the state into a deterministic latent state H and a, a stochastic latent state J. The, form, the former uses a GIO to carry forward past information and the influences of agent actions. Well, the latter incorporates current observation information X and uh, captures the impact of random factors through random sampling. A stochastic state model does not use this XT and is based solely on H to imagine J. Thus, it can be used for multi-step planning. A reward prediction module is uh, responsible for predicting rewards to assist multi-step planning. And a reconstruction module serves as an auxiliary task to prevent key information in X from being forgotten. 
I've asked some differs in that the observation information X includes a target page with inserted ads, which contains the, the agent's action information. Therefore, the action is no longer directly inputted. Reward prediction module has also been transformed into a user response prediction module, providing the probability distribution of the user's responses at time t. Here are some specific formulas displayed. The deterministic state modules uses a GRU. They introduces randomness through normal sampling. The true ZT and the imagined AT are constrained using KL divergence to bring the imagined Z closer to the true Z. The user's response prediction provides the pro probability distribution of user responses. The reconstruction of key information further amplifies the predictive accuracy of our model. Subsequently, we enhance the computational efficiencies and reduce latencies through written net based SSM, which is crucial for real time as a option. The main difference here is that we use written Retinite to perform parallel computations to obtain the deterministic state H containing a current observation information on X at time T. Therefore, sampling directly from H yields the state Z, and the imaging based on the previous state H result is imagined Z. Here is a display of relevant formulas where Retinite, which allows for parallel computation, has replaced the GRU. Um, lastly, employing multi-step Q-learning, DOQN efficiently bootstraps reward information over multiple steps, refining the edge auction process. Here, though, is used for important sampling to correct the bias in the, in the expected Q-value during multi-step multi updates. According to Sutton's paper, omitting this correction does not affect the performance, and this it is overall overlooked. Here's the detailed structure of DOQN. Since, since um, methods based on DQN are only applicable to finite action space, we further propose the method based on architecture, uh, act critical. Now there is part three, experiment and conclusion. We collected a real industrial dataset using a random policy on the to takeaway platform, which contains a large number of users, items, and requests. Our offline evaluation metrics includes two major categories. One is platform revenue, which includes advertising fees and commissions, and the other is user experience, which includes average conventions rates and overall user satisfaction. Here, we present the specific formulas for relevant metrics. Note that REX here primarily represents the situation where a user clicks. We conduct offline experiments on the Twin platform. Our results demonstrate that DQN outperforms the existing state of the art methods, improving revenue indicators by 3.94% and user experience score by 2.11% on average. Additionally, our model showed an online enhancement during a 21-day online A-B test in key metrics like CTR, CPM, indicating improved user engagement and platform revenue. Furthermore, the latency of new model compared to our baseline showed no significant difference, highlighting the success of our latency optimization strategy using retinite based SSM. Additionally, we conducted experiments on a publicly available IL4S dataset, a reinforcement learning recommendation system dataset collected by NetEase in real gaming scenarios, which has a large action space dimension. The main uh, evaluation metrics are total reward and user system deficit, while with the former reflecting platform revenue and the latter indicating user experience. It is evident that our method significantly outperforms the SOTA baseline HAC on both metrics, demonstrating that our approach is also effective in continuous action spaces. In summary, DOQN 
references significant advancement in Azure Lockson strategies, offering a great tool that both benefits users and platforms. Thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to any questions.